Welcome back to At Home with Gigi. Today I'm going to be sharing with you four of my favorite high-end farmhouse DIYs. I cannot wait for y'all to see them and tell me what you think. I'm using all Dollar Tree items. Guys, also while I'm thinking about it, my next video is going to be out on Sunday, June the 23rd at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. So make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when it goes live. Now with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. For this project, we're going to be using this wood round from the Dollar Tree and we're going to give it one coat of Waverly chalk paint in the color white. And once that's dry, I've taped down my stencil and I'm mixing together some spackling in this color celery from Waverly chalk paint because I want my paint mixture to be thickened and whenever I'm applying it to the stencil, I want it to have a like a 3D raised effect. And I'm using this little spatula to just spread everything out. You could use a popsicle stick, whatever you prefer. It would probably be easier because this kept snagging. But anyway, I did end up giving it two, excuse me, three layers on each side. For the words on the stencil, we're going to be using the color Elephant from Waverly. And I'm just using a torn up piece of sponge. I think this came from the Dollar Tree as well, just to lightly tap over the stencil. As you can see, it's a little too big for the wood round, so I wasn't able to tape it down completely, so it was shifting just a bit. So I'm just using my fingers to kind of hold it in place, just to try to help prevent any bleeding. And then I'll just go back in with a little tiny paintbrush and connect those lines that was left from the stencil. After I had added the stencil, I decided I wanted to paint the top and the bottom of the wood round. So I mixed together the colors linen white from Rust-Oleum and then I added in sun-kissed peach and tropic orange from Apple Barrel. I just kept mixing them together until I got this beautiful color. And then I ended up doing two coats because I was lazy and didn't sand down the wood round and I had to go back and sand it down because it was so furry after the first coat. But I love this color, isn't it beautiful? To make the handle, I'm using these beads from the crafting section at Dollar Tree. They were already painted. They're honestly not the best quality, but I was able to pick out enough in order to make the handle. And it worked perfect for this project, fast and easy. And I made a quick little messy bow. Y'all, this ribbon came from Michael's. I got it for 70, 80% off, so it was actually like less than $2 a roll. Isn't this ribbon just absolutely gorgeous? But it's just, it's a little too big. I, <laughs> it probably needs to be cut back or cut down just a little bit, but that's okay. I love a big bow. And for the center, I'm just popping in some of these little rosettes. And this come from Walmart back in there where you get your fabric, stuff like that. And I think it's just the perfect finishing touch for this. I love these colors. It's just so beautiful. And it just, it will go all the way through spring and summer. And I've had it on my back um, door for forever. And I just absolutely love it. I just wanted to say a quick welcome to all of my new subscribers. I'm so happy to have you here and thank you to all of my returning subscribers and thank y'all so much for all the sweet well wishes as I'm recovering from my surgery. It truly means the world to me. We're going to be creating a faux stone platter using this plastic tray from the Dollar Tree but first I took it outside and gave it a coat front and back of the Rust-Oleum white spray paint. I'm kind of using that as a primer to help the plaster adhere to that plastic surface. And I'm using Plaster of Paris and I started out with about three scoops originally. I didn't really measure the water, I just kept pouring a little bit in at a time and mixing it until I got the consistency I was looking for. Now you'll see in just a moment, I did go back and add more Plaster of Paris because obviously this is just not going to be nearly enough to cover the uh, plaster or rather the platter on one side. So I just added more in, just kept adding water just a tiny bit at a time. And as you can see, this is this consistency that I was looking for. Makes it a lot easier to spread out. Yeah, this was just so easy to do. A little messy, yes, but it was so easy to do and it was actually kind of fun. I've always wanted to create my own dough bowl, but I don't know if it actually turns out to be a dough bowl, more of a stone platter maybe. But anyway, I'm just smoothing out the plaster and as 
it gets kind of goopy on my fingers, I just dip it into some water and just help continue to just smooth it out, set it aside, let it dry 24 hours. I came back in the next day and I did the exact same process on the top side. Set it aside again and let it dry 24 hours. And then I repeated the same process again, only on the top side. So the top side I did two coats, the bottom one. I took it outside and sanded it down. I wanted the rough and sharp edges off. I didn't want to take all the lumps and bumps out because that's going to give it its character. I decided to give the platter a coat of paint top and bottom and I didn't have the color that I wanted or rather I didn't have enough of the color that I wanted so I created some chalk paint using Apple Barrel's Beachcomber Beige and in hindsight I really wish that I had not because I got about halfway through this and I was just like Lord I am not a fan of this but I just moved forward, finished painting it, let it set overnight and dry, kind of went back and forth if I should change the color as you can see I did not. And I'm using a mixture of, because again, I didn't have the color that I wanted. I mixed truffle and sandstone from Waverly Chalk Paint and just mixed the two together. And I really like that combination. So I'm just using a wet paper towel. It is really wet and a damp sponge. And I'm just kind of pouncing, rubbing, dabbing, whatever the words are. I'm not a painter, so I don't have the exact words, but you can see what I'm doing on screen. I really like the effect that I got. And I just kept using the three colors just mixing them together. If I got it too dark in one spot, I'd add in a little bit of the sandstone. If I got it too light in another, I'd add in more of the truffle or the two mixed together. I know in certain spots it is looking a little bit crazy, but hang in there with me. You'll see the finished result. After it set a couple of days and it fully dried, I truly love how this looks. I don't know so much if it's a dough bowl which was my initial intention. It's, I think it's more of a like a vintagey rustic type platter. But y'all, I, I love this so much. I would love to know what your thoughts are about it. Do you think it's a dough bowl or does it look more like a vintagey, rustic type platter? And would you ever guess that this was originally a Dollar Tree plastic platter? We're going to start this DIY by staining this little wooden crate that came from the Dollar Tree. And for my stain, I just mixed together water and some antiquing wax from Waverly. And just using a baby wipe, just wiping it on as you can see, and I'm going to do that to the entire crate. I'm going to use this chippy brush from the Dollar Tree, and I had intended for it to be a very light dry brushing, but as you can see, I did not remove enough paint. So it's pretty heavy. Now this is definitely optional. If you don't like the dry brushing, you can certainly skip this step altogether. To create our arrangement, we're going to be using these beautiful peachy orange roses from the Dollar Tree. Guys, aren't these just beautiful? They just scream summer to me. And then I'm just gonna fill in with some bits and pieces of greenery that I have left over from other projects. I'm gonna pop in these tulips just for a little bit of a contrasting color. Now, I didn't have anything else in close to this color, so I'm using the tulips. I know it's a little past the time for tulips, but anywho, I've had these left over for a couple of years, so they're not in the best of shape. I had to use just a little bit of hot glue to kind of keep them on their stems. This little galvanized birdhouse came from the Dollar Tree, and I think it's just so cute. And as you saw, I first used my white paint pen to outline the flowers. I just didn't like it. So I was rummaging around, came across my puffy paints, and I'm like, you know what, let's just go for it. So I just took my time, outlined the flowers and all the little greenery, and I am so glad that I took the time to do this because it just really made those little features just pop out using that puffy paint. Mm -hmm. 
Now the stem that was on the birdhouse just didn't give me the height I wanted, so I snipped that off and I took two bamboo skewers, wrapped them with twine, and I'm just hot gluing them to the back of the birdhouse, and then I'm gonna add some tape over the top of that just for some extra security and keep everything in place. Off camera, I did add in some moss just to cover up the floral foam so you wouldn't be able to see it. And I thought the front of the crate looked just a little plain, so I'm using this stencil from the Dollar Tree that I've cut down. It's just the best things. And I'm using this white spackling. I love this. It comes from Amazon. And it's just such a bright white. And I used about three layers just to build it up and really get that raised 3D effect on it. We're going to attach the wooden crate to this $5 cutting board from the Dollar Tree. And I really didn't care for the color of the cutting board. I didn't want to paint it, so I decided to stain it with the antiquing wax from Waverly. I'm just using a baby wipe, and I'm just keep continuing to add layers of the stain until I get it to the desired color. I want to distress the cutting board a little bit, so I'm just going to dry brush over it with Rust-Oleum's Linen White. I've already given the word sign a base coat of Rust-Oleum's Linen White. Now I'm going back in with ink from Waverly and I'm going to give it another coat. And while it's still slightly wet, I'm going to do what's called wet distressing with the baby wipe and I'm just going to go around the very edges of the letters and just remove some of that paint so that white will pop through. To attach the crate, I'm using hot glue and I'm doing the same for the word sign. Now, I forgot to add my beloved Gorilla Gel glue. I don't know what I was thinking, so it would be better to add that for a more permanent hold. If it comes apart, which sometimes, you know, hot glue does, I will just reattach it and use my Gorilla Gel glue. I think this came out so beautiful. I just love it. I may go back and add something under the best things. I haven't decided if I want anything there yet or not, but I absolutely love the little birdhouse in it and these beautiful peachy orange roses. It is just beautiful. We are going to be creating a beaded garland with these ping pong balls from the Dollar Tree. We will be using all three packs, well except for two, and they met an unfortunate tragic end, but seriously. We have taken a pen and marked each side of the ping pong balls to try and make sure the holes are going to be even and directly across from each other. And then I'm just using the tip of my little Surebonder hot glue gun just to create the holes. I mean, it's hot and it just goes right through the plastic and I just give it a little twist and it just creates the perfect hole. Next, we're going to go ahead and give each of the ping pong balls a coat of Waverly chalk paint in the color white. Let that dry. Then I'll go back in and give it a second coat. Now, the inspiration for this came from a garland that I saw at Pottery Barn. It was much bigger than this, of course, and obviously wooden, but it was $129, and I just could not justify paying that much. So I said, you know what? I'm going to attempt to recreate it, but you'll have to tell me what you think. I'm going to put a picture at the end, so let me know what you think about this. A little trick that I like to use whenever I'm making a beaded garland is to use a large needle and it just helps your twine, thread, whatever just go right on through the bead or in this case ping pong ball and I struggle sometimes to get it through the eye of that needle so I just wrap a little piece of tape around it. Sorry I guess I cut that part out but I wrap a piece of tape around the end and just kind of smoosh it down and it just makes it so much easier because that's something that I do struggle with especially when I get older and I'm fat fingered. But anyway, just a little trick. We're going to create a tag for the end of the garland. And this come from Dollar Tree. I think you get them in a packet of, what is it, six or eight, something like that. And I'm just using celery from Waverly Chalk Paint. Y'all, I love this color. I can use this any time of the year. I know a lot of people only use it during the spring, but I absolutely love it. And then I'm going to go in with the word hope. And these stickers came from Amazon, and I'll try to remember to link them down below for you. I find using these sticker words or even the letters that you can find at the Dollar Tree or even Walmart is a great alternative if you don't have 
a Cricut or you don't have good handwriting. I don't have either. So I use a lot of stick on letters or words and it just works just fine for me. Now to help keep this in place and to seal it in, I go over it with a layer of Mod Podge. It also has another purpose. It takes down that plasticky look so it looks a little better and just doesn't look quite, you know, so much like a sticker. I'm just going to tie it onto the end there. As you can see, I've already created a tassel and that's it y'all. It was just so fast, so easy to do and I love it. I really do. This is the, my inspiration. I obviously, it's much, much smaller than this, and these are wooden beads. But you know what? I'm perfectly happy with my plastic ping pong balls. And y'all tell me what your thoughts are. I hope you've enjoyed these amazing farmhouse DIYs. Let me know which one's your favorite. You know, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, leave me a comment, all the things that lets YouTube know that you've enjoyed my video. Seriously, it means so much to me and it really does help my channel to grow and it's absolutely free. Don't forget, brand new video next Sunday, June the 23rd, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. I'll see you right back here. Bye.